Well, I think there, there's a certain epic quality to some of the songs on this record. But then again, it's tempered by things like I Know a Girl Called Johnny and Ave Maria and stuff, which are, are much more micro in their approach. It's great. I'm fairly confident about it. I think, I mean, I, I believe that they're all really good songs and my audience has changed a lot in, in, in the last four years and it's, there's a lot more young people and they don't have the same sort of historic references to me. They basically know Teenage Snuff Film better than anything else. The record label that Teenage Snuff Film came out on folded about eight months after the record was released and the only other offers I'd had to make records, the budgets were so low that I just wouldn't have been able to make a decent record on that money. And I was sort of occupied with other things. My health has been really bad. So it wasn't sort of at the forefront of my mind going to the studio. I tend to just write bits and pieces until I've got a reason, you know, like making a record to put them all together. And... Golden Age of Bloodshed. Right. Probably the most macabre one on the record, isn't it? The song is a, a comment on the feel of the times that we live in more than, you know, any kind of direct reference to shedding blood. There is a apocalyptic feel to the times that's been propagated, living in fear. And when I'm moved to write something like that, you know it's really there. I don't usually write about things that are outside of myself. Where did the image of oozy toting Catholic schoolgirls come from? Was <laughs> I'm really not sure. It was, I was just um, trying to ev evoke a sort of semi-medieval sense of portents and visions and of warning and... It's like the revelations of, of Roland Howard. Yes. <laughs> How much of yourself is in a song like, oh, the excellent duet with um, the, the lady from Hate Rock? Uh, I know a girl called Johnny. Well, I set out to write a song that was teenage, but it reflects a certain part of my personality. And I have a real love of, of that kind of girl group genre and stuff, which, you know, must, um, you know, say something about me. I'm not sure what exactly, but it was an attempt to subvert that kind of naivety, but at the same time to leave some of the naivety there, deliberately as a um, pan to those kind of teenage feelings. You know, I was subject to all the same kind of teenage emotions and adolescent problems that everybody else was, you know, had to experience as well. When I was in The Boys Next Door, I was a teenager. It wasn't the birthday party so much. I wasn't playing in the birthday party until, you know, well, it was until I was about 20. But, um, you know, I, I still went through the unrequited loves of, of all teenagers. You know, it's a, a comment on the, the way those things are portrayed in song and so forth as well. Another really nice sort of a continuum um, between this album and the last is the idea of having a, a couple of extraordinarily surprising cover versions. Which one? Life's what you make it. Right. I always feel like a greater amount of freedom doing someone else's songs, and particularly when you know that you can bring something to them that wasn't there before. Life's what you make it, um, while being sort of lyrically fairly pertinent to my life at the moment. I just felt that it could be done in a, in a much more aggressive fashion and made into something much more monstrous than it was. The people involved, you can never really be sure how it's going to turn out because people bring new things to projects and 
because I had veto power over everything. How often did you have to press that button? Not very, not very often at all, which is you know one of the reasons that I work with the people that I do because I know that they're going to do a really good job. Nick's just a very talented person. He was very much taking a back seat. I mean, you know, he's very aware of the fact that it's, it's my record, and I also think that he, you know, enjoys having less responsibility on than on some of the things that he does. I just really like the way he plays drums. He has actually played his fair share of drums in his, his career in Crime and City Solution and so forth. I think that's one of the reasons that I like him is because he's not a drummer drummer. He approaches it from a much more musical point of view. John bought a lot of strange stuff to the record and Sometimes songs turn out to be completely different from the way that you imagined them, but they're just as good. When was the last time you were in New Zealand? It was 1983, wasn't it? Yeah, a long time ago. You think one day you might uh, travel across the uh, sea? Yeah, but by all means. Yeah, no, I'd like to. Thanks very much. Good on you, Roland. Thank all you. All right, talk to you. Bye. The rain fell on the street of grey.